Hey friends, welcome back to Gardening Suburbia. My name is Amanda. Today we are in my backyard and as you can see, my dryer is out, which means I am close drying all of my lovely clothes in the air, which is fine. Um, but I am excited because I am noticing quite a few volunteer plants. So volunteer plants are those little seedlings that basically were self-seeded by the plant the previous year and are coming up again this year. Um, I do have quite a few things that are coming up that I'm noticing. Um, with the soil temperatures not quite up to high standards of tomatoes and peppers and things like that, um, you will get some volunteer tomatoes. I'm hoping that I might get some of those. Not that I really need any more tomatoes just because I have like 20 some varieties that I started this year, but it would be exciting to see that. It is my third year of gardening in this space. Um, so I have a couple years of things that are, have been self-seeded. Um, so let me show you my brick bed first, because this one, <laughs> my garden is still a mess. I haven't really done any garden cleanup quite yet. I mowed my backyard for the first time. I wanted to give the pollinators a few more weeks of flowers, which I didn't even cut my grass that short. So there's still quite a few flowers and, uh, things for them to forage some pollen and nectar from. Um, so the little purple spots are flowers. There's a few yellow in there as well. My dog is back there. So this is my lovely brick bed that I put in. Um, I still need to go ahead and like clean up some of the weeds. There's quite a few. We've got some dandelions that are in here. I can go actually ahead and harvest some of those roots and see what I can do with those because you can do quite a bit with dandelion. Um, I have some grass, some hay. My These are my crocus, which they've already flowered. It's quite warm, so they're, they're past prime. And then I have some carrot seedlings. Some are starting to get some true leaves on there. Um, and then I just have some like random onions and garbage because the wind blows all of the garbage into my backyard and then these are all uh garlic so couple e like last year i think i started garlic i started it in the spring and the cloves were super tiny so when i went to go harvest the actual bulbs were super tiny as well because with garlic the larger the clove that you plant the bigger the bulb you'll get um, I did go ahead and plant out my garlic last fall so this is all of the garlic that I planted and it's looking so good it's so much better than what it was last year last year these stalks weren't even any work like I think this was the biggest stalk that I got right here but this guy, I think, went ahead and I either planted two or it's already um, went ahead and split off. I'm not quite sure. I am still picking pieces of grass out of this bed. This bed was brand new to last year. Um, I decided to put straw, what I thought was straw. It was labeled as straw, but it's hay because it has grass seeds in it. So there's a few little random grass uh, that is poking up. This garlic just looks so good. I'm so excited. These stalks are really good size. These are my elephant garlics, the larger ones. And then I have some soft necks and some hard necks. And you can tell that the soil quality is good because I have all these little baby mushrooms popping up. They're everywhere. So the garlic's looking good. And that's definitely in comparison to this little baby garlic. So these are all volunteers. These are ones that got left in the ground accidentally and they've reseeded. So I'll go ahead and pull those up. I don't think I wanna keep these guys just cause these are not gonna produce anything that's, you know, substantial. Um, I had I think rosemary planted here, but I don't know that rosemary is perennial to my area. Um, so that is, the brick bed oh and we've got some parsley this is just one that i bought yeah 
he's he's happy. I was harvesting off him in the in the winter. And then this container is catnip and oregano. Um, it kind of readily comes back every year. I don't think it's quite gotten there and it needs a refresh on the soil. This is something that I planted last year um, for the fall and he's going to seed now, which I'm gonna leave him for the pollinators until I need this bed. Right now it's okay, I don't really need it. The celery is looking pretty good. Um, our sunflowers, I'm pretty sure these are sunflowers, are still quite peony, but it is getting kind of chilly in the night for those. But what I have noticed is this guy here. If you were here with me last season, I had these grow bags for my potatoes. And instead of harvesting out of this little like lift pa patch that they have, I went ahead and just dumped them into this kiddie pool right here. And I guess I left a potato in here. And so now I just have this little, little potato sprout and I just, it makes me happy. I have my entire bed of potatoes, which I haven't noticed any sprouts just yet, but that is perfectly okay. The weeds kind of are taking over up towards the top, which is fine. I kind of assumed that that would happen. Um, one other thing I have noticed is that because I have my honeysuckle right here towards the mid-morning, um, half of this bed towards the lower end will get a little bit more shade just because the honeysuckle is just so big. It blocks the sun right there. Um, I might need to trim down the honeysuckle just so that those get enough sunlight. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited about the potential of all those potatoes. The tulips have gone to their last days. A lot of their petals are falling off. Um, and I'm pretty sure the deer are eating them, which is fine. They were, they were, you know, they had a good life. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually leave these guys in this box to multiply. Um, if you are a flower farmer or looking to do tulips for selling for a profit, most flower farmers will actually go ahead and harvest the entire tulip along with the bulb to refrigerate. And that's because they'll get a longer life with the bulb because it's a source of nutrition for those flowers. Um, and then they'll just go ahead and rebuy bulbs. Um, I'm not doing that. Maybe in the future I will be doing something quite like that. But for now, um, my aunt told me that she typically will leave the flowers to completely wilt away and get all the, the leaves to fall, or all of the petals to fall. And then she'll go ahead and trim the stalk. Um, and then go ahead and just plant some other things in there. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave these guys, and then once it gets quite a bit warmer, or touch warmer, I'll go ahead and plant some other flowers in here. I might try to do sunflowers. We'll see. Um, I bought, <laughs> I'm super excited. I bought a couple packs of Sunflower Steve's Van Gogh Fantasy Mix, which is a beautiful variety of variegated, uh, double petal, single petal, whole bunch of different colors and i'm gonna go ahead and get those guys planted and hopefully save some seeds we'll see how it goes the squirrels are quite devious in my areas as well as my uh, bunnies and the deer <laughs> so we'll see how those those go i really need to get some red pepper flakes or some pepper powder to sprinkle on a lot of the things because i've been seeing the squirrels rooting around and every once in a while i'll let my dog out on the balcony and get them or get him to scare them away but onward, there really isn't much else in the way of volunteers so far. A lot of things are propping back to life. So my Yara that I have is a pink variety. It's coming back. I have a couple other varieties of Yara sorted upstairs. Or yeah, Ortel's Rose. Um, 
I love yarrow. I think it is so pretty. It just reminds me of a fern and I love the little bunches of tiny flowers. Plus it is medicinal. You can use it in teas. Um, so I'm excited to have this. The brassica slash lettuce bed slash onion bed is looking okay. Um, some of the things, the leaves that were fresh, the first set of leaves that got sunlight look kind of dead. But as you can see, they've got some new growth. I need to go ahead and water this bed in. I really should set up um, some drip tape or even like uh, a soaker hose or something like that so that these guys are getting more consistent watering. But things look to be doing okay. The lettuces look okay. I'm hoping to actually get heads of lettuce, but we'll see how that goes. Um, broccolis are looking good. I love broccoli salad, so even if I can't get actual a head of broccoli, I can go ahead and make broccoli salad with the leaves that they produce. It looks like a crocus got transplanted over here by one of the squirrels, so that's kind of funny. Yeah, see? They dig it up and then they just die. It's all right, more nutrition for the soil. And then my lovely asparagus. So I have one single spear of asparagus, which is why I'm out here today. I'm planning on planting out. I got a couple uh, bags or crowns of Mary Washington variety of asparagus to go ahead and plant out the rest of this bed. Um, just because when I originally planted out this bed with asparagus, I really just put it in this back corner. Um, as you can see, the squirrels chopped the top of this one off, so he's not grown quite as well as this one is. Hopefully, we will get more spears popping through the soil, but we will have to wait and be patient and see. The onions are looking good. I don't know if I... <laughs> they look much happier with the water and then also the new fresh compost that I put on this bed. The last thing I wanted to show you guys is my green stock. Um, so with troubleshooting with my green stock, I realized I needed to place it in a different spot. Originally I had it in this back corner, which is under my mulberry tree that I have right here. So it wasn't getting quite enough sun. So I moved it over to this side. But now <laughs> what I'm realizing is that it is not level. It is very uh, <laughs> one-sided. So this side is getting a majority of the water while this side gets hardly any. Um, <clears throat> so to enable the <laughs> actual, the, like the best part about this is that you can fill this top portion up to the designated lines and it will water every single pocket evenly. But if your green stock is not level, it's not gonna evenly water things. So I need to figure out how to level this on my concrete because my concrete is not level. Um, but I've got some lettuces, some, uh, spinaches some spinach there are strawberries in here but i don't know if they are just not going to make it this year um they are supposed to be perennial in my area but they're not looking too hot then i've got some peas like uh sugar snap peas planted all through these bottom levels and then i think i've got some cilantro or Yeah, it's either cilantro or parsley, not quite sure. Yeah, that is the green stalk. I'm going to actually plant out, I got um, a 10 pack of these white Carolina strawberries. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant these guys in here. Um, those you can either soak them in water and then plant them out or you can plant them out and then water them in really well. I've heard both ways. Um, so I guess it's really up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and just plant them and then water them in. And then 
those Mary Washington asparagus that I'm going to start in that bed. So I'm going to go ahead and get to planning. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. If you want to go ahead and check out any of my other videos, I'll go ahead and post one up here. But until the meantime, thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.